Welcome back to the channel. This is Nathaniel Cradle, your rich friend. And today is special. I've got Jacqueline sitting here with me. And today we're gonna go over some wealth strategies. She's made a great decision today to actually do something different that I think a lot of you would actually relate to. So let's jump into it. I've got just a few questions here. Um, if you can, just let's just be candid, right? Let's just kind of just talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, our viewers are watching, they're listening, and hopefully you guys can take something from this that I think is gonna be very, very valuable in 2023. So let's just talk about some of, some of the topics that I think were just extremely popular back in 2022. Revenue streams, side hustles. I mean, these were just like the talk, the yeah. talk of the town. Yeah. Um, you, you couldn't log on to a channel, you couldn't go to a conference, um, especially a financial literacy conference without them talking about just wealth strategies revenue streams, like I said, and side hustles, whether it was Lyft or DoorDash, delivering food, whatever it is, people were really, really looking for just that side hustle. Right. So <clears throat> just to kind of give some context before we get started here, inflation is at a 7.7 .7 today and the price of goods and services continue to go higher as we speak, which leads me to my question. You resigned today. You resigned from a job, even considering today's inflation. Yeah. That's kind of ballsy, right? So you killed one of your revenue streams. Just talk to me, talk to us about some of your reasoning. Mm, I did, I killed my revenue stream. Um, but I gained something in return, I gained my time back. Time for me to focus on building a better revenue stream. So today I uh, resigned from being a professor at a college today and I got my time back. I got a part of me back that I was giving to other people. So yes, inflation is high. I mean, you know it when you go get something to eat, like a burger used to be, 99 cents, that joint is like $5 now. So um, I am very well aware of the inflation increasing and I'm feeling that. Uh, and that's what's fueling me to make for sure that even though I quit one job or quit a job, I am now in control of the revenue that I am bringing in after this point. So why now? Like, you know, you, 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 you told, you told me today, you know, you were excited. You hit the send button. You send in your, your resignation. Yeah. Why today? Why not yesterday? Why not a year ago? Why not next week? Why today? You know, I'm going to be, we said we're going to be candid. Yeah. I had to really meditate on it. Um, there's a lot that goes into instructing other people. Um, so hold on, talk to us about that meditation. So kind of walk us through, you had mentioned earlier that, you know, you got up, you meditated. What thought process went into that? <sighs> so, you know, I've been really looking for my purpose and revenue streams are great if it's aligned with your purpose. My belief is, if it's aligned with your purpose. And uh, there's just been, there's money coming in, absolutely. But I didn't feel good about it. I did not feel good about it. I felt very, um, you know that feeling like, I'm just going, I'm just doing, I'm on autopilot. I'm, you know, creating these courses and just rinse, recycle and repeat. Rinse, recycle and repeat. And uh, it wasn't fulfilling to me anymore. It wasn't challenging to me anymore. So um, I wasn't in that space a year ago. I wasn't in that space a month ago. I am in that space now where I want to take greater control over my future, over my um, my income, over, over, over all of it. So uh, that's why today, that's why today, I, I definitely got confirmation um, from whatever you choose to believe in, I believe in God. I got confirmation and I am obedient to that and I'm 
I'm just rocking and rolling. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, you know, I had a few reservations and a few questions about it. And I said, you know something, instead of just kind of asking you um, without an audience, I know that there are just a lot of people out there that could really just kind of use the understanding of confirmation and, and use the understanding of why meditation was so important before you made this decision. So talk to us, and I don't want to mess this up. So talk a bit about your plans to fill this extra space, considering you're no longer trading time for cash. Oh man. So I am actually in this space through meditation of, I want to learn. Mm. I want to be a student of life mm. and I want to learn option trading. So I'm going to have to definitely reach out to you and, and learn more about option trading. Mm. Um, I want to get more into the financial sector of things uh, because I do have stocks, but I have never traded options. Um, I am scared as shit to do that, but I'm going to do it. I am going to um, take the risk, yeah. and um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn about option trading. Something important that I think that you said that the audience should should hear is that she's scared. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being scared. In fact, I actually go towards being scared because that means that I care. You care about failure, but I'm going to tell you this right now, no experience, no failure. So you have to actually go into that zone of, of um, uncertainty so that you can gain the experience and kill fear. So, so no risk, no reward. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, one of the, the wise words. Um, here's the good thing. You're currently a business owner right. and a founder of two different nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the key differences between being an owner or in a founder of businesses as opposed to working for a company that has just strongholds? So you're gonna compare the flex time, what people would consider having flex time as being an owner or a founder of organizations compared to working in you know, for the schools or for corporate or, you know, for somebody else, what are some of the differences? I think you just said it. There's a stronghold, right? You are not necessarily able to make immediate change. When you are in an organization, a lot of those processes, a lot of those um, ways of doing things are already established. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot for you to be able to change that. When you own your business or you're an entrepreneur, you are the driving, the, you're the driver of your organization. So if I want change to happen, change is done. And I'll create a process around that. You are, are the driver. Now don't, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of work that comes into owning your own business. There's a lot of work that comes into being a founder of an organization. You are the face. Everything that you do is directly tied to that organization. Um, you know, I could go out and completely act an ass somewhere and my corporation that I work for, uh, let me take that back, social media, it, I could probably lose my job. But if I do that same thing as a as an entrepreneur or as a founder of an organization, I could suffer greatly mm -hmm. from that. And so can the people that work for me, they can suffer as well. So the biggest thing is that you are in control of sinking or swimming. Mm -hmm. You're really in control of that. Whereas with an organization that you work for, someone else is in control of that. So what are some of the risk factors you considered before taking this leap of faith, before the meditation and having the confirmation to just quit, send your resignation, start something new? You know, just to be, just the, 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 the risk is definitely income, but it wasn't necessarily income that I just solely relied on. It was just, you know, it's, it's a revenue stream. It's not something that was, you know, slated to make me rich. It wasn't slated to pay off, 
any debt that I had. It was just money coming in. So even though there is going to be, you know, a, a difference in income, I'm willing to take that. I'm willing to take that hit. But what I can do is the money that I have made, I can 10X that. I can 5X that. Hey, hey if I even 1X it, 2X it, I'm, yeah, I'm good. good. Um, but there is, a, you know, it's something new. I've never traded options. It's something new. And so there's a learning curve that comes with it. There's also going to be um, some money lost, right? When you're when you're earning money, you don't think about losing it. So um, that's going to be one thing. And I'm okay with that risk, right? No risk, no reward. Um, but I'm also wanting to be more um, experienced in it before I just dive in. I'm not, I, you know, I don't want to go balls in and completely lose everything right option trading is a lot of risk but if you understand option trading it can lead you to you know great calculated steps into making good decisions in good companies um whether you're shorting the stock or you're going long on a stock option trading is also a great way to make weekly income monthly income yearly income wh whichever you consider but um the risks are great um, so like with Jacqueline is saying that she's, she's going to take the time to learn, right? She's going to ask the right questions or the wrong questions. You want to know what you're doing wrong um, in a lot of cases as well. A lot of reading, a lot of research, um, a lot of YouTube, a lot of, you know, questioning certain theories. So this is definitely not, you know, financial advice. Um, you know, if you're going to go into option trading, definitely um, you know, consider doing a lot of studying and asking a lot of questions as well. Um, so where you're at today, the decision that you made today, how is this going to paint a brighter future? <sighs> I probably won't be so mean anymore. I'll have more time to myself. Yeah. Um, you know, the future is as bright as I painted. Mm -hmm. At this point, I, I feel good. I feel I feel good. I feel like I have just opened up a door that uh, has been closed for a while. And um, I, I, you know, I definitely will say at the end of it all, I am going to create my future. I am not waiting for someone else to create it for me. Um, it gives me the space um, and the energy to invest in me and to do what I want to do and uh, you know to live this thing called life right uh, one thing that we can't buy is time and um, my time is worth a lot more right and the price keeps going up yeah yeah you know the one thing that I that I'm definitely taking from you is that you know although you've resigned it's not like you're just gonna sit back you know you know I hear this all the time you know I'm just gonna kind of sit back and just kind of just just gather my thoughts for a second um, and then I'll figure it out in a month or two. And that's definitely one thing that I didn't hear from you. you it really sounds like you're ready to just hit the ground running, learning more about yourself, investing in yourself, um, literally day one. Yeah, don't get me wrong. All right, I do wanna, I do wanna binge watch a couple of things. <laughs> um, but for the most part, I, I want to be- This, this YouTube <laughs> channel is what she's gonna That's binge. what I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> I definitely want this time to be a complete 180 of what I've done, right? I, I want it to be something in a different direction of my life. This is this is the part of life that gets good, and that's and that's the part that I want to make sure that I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I again, I mentioned I, I want to be a, a student of life, and um, I, I think that this is it. I know that this is you it. I know that this is it. So what had to align in order to make this calculated decision? I needed to stop. I needed to stop. I needed to slow down. I have spent a lot of my time from going from one revenue stream to the next, to the next, to the next. And at one point, I, I want to say I had four different revenue streams and it's like juggling them all in the air. And you're always on the go. You're never, you're always just moving, trying to keep all the balls in the air. I really needed time 
to just connect and needed time to hear and know that this is not this is not life right working for these multiple industries was not a life that i wanted to live it was time for me to be able to um to pause collect my thoughts and say, this these last five or six years cannot be the next five or six years and uh that was impactful for me and it was it was important that i uh I sit in it and wait for it, question it, and think about my next steps. Is it scary? I said earlier, hell yeah, it's scary, right? You're used to operating that way. It became a habit. It became something that you do. So it's almost like, what do I do now? Well, I already know what I'm going to do now. And that takes the fear out of a lot of it. One thing that I have found a common thread between the wealthy is that <clears throat> They're not doing 10 other things. They don't have, you know, five or six things that they're doing at once. Rather, there are income streams, but it's based off of the investments that are made. So for example, if I'm working one job, but I'm investing in also real estate and I'm earning money off of that, and I'm, or I'm, I'm gaining money off of that, and I'm, you know, investing in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and I'm making money off of that. Those are all separate revenue streams as well. Now that to me is just kind of working a little smarter and you're becoming an expert in that one field as opposed to spreading your time out, you know, in four or five different fields, not becoming really an expert at anything and just, just, you know, spreading yourself extremely thin. You know, it kind of, it reminds me actually of a quote that I was listening to uh, Layla Hermosi and she said, do you want to be, do you want to be a, th you want to be a thermostat and not a thermometer, right? If you think about a thermostat, a thermometer, I'm sorry, if you think about a thermometer, I'm not going to mess this up because it was great. If you think about a thermometer, it actually adjusts to the surroundings. But if you think of a thermostat, it sets the surroundings. Mm -hmm. So I want to be a thermostat. I don't want to continue to be this thermometer that's oh. dipping in all these industries. I want to set the tone, right? I've done it in one aspect of my life and I want to continue to set the environment um, for my success. And that is a huge reason why it was time for me to make this change. Mm -hmm. Well said. All right, so listen. Thank you, Layla. <laughs> so listen, I don't want to mess this last question up either. So that others have a clear path. What are some of the, your suggestions so that others can walk with confidence as they embark on a journey similar to yours? Uh, I'm going to say don't settle for safe. I read a book, Sarah Jakes Roberts, don't settle for safe. You will be stuck doing the same thing every day if you continue to settle for that. Um, get it, get in a habit of, of getting quiet, of getting still, get in a habit of reflecting, reflecting on your day, reflecting on what you want the next two or three days to look like, um, plan your, plan your journey. Um, but more importantly, listen to people like yourself, Nathaniel, um, that give inspiration, that give ideas and information. You don't have to repeat the, 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 the cycle, right? You People have lived certain things in life and learned from those folks. Um, it's important. But the number one thing that I will say is to definitely get still and get clear about what it is that you want to do. Get clear about how you want the next five, 10 years to go for you. And if you say, I just want to make money all the time, well, then get clear about how's that money going to come in. Mm. Are you going to be the controller? Are you going to be the Are you going to be the thermostat of that money? Or are you going to be the thermometer of that? Mm. So that would be my suggestion for anyone. Um, it's it, it worked for me. That was I, I couldn't have said it better. Uh, I'm super glad and thankful that you know you joined us today. Thanks for answering these. You know, just a number of questions that I had. I cannot wait to see where you're at 
States this time next year. And if possible, if we could interview you and just kind of learn about your, your path that you took from now, day one resignation to 364 days later and, and seeing where you're at. Absolutely, you know, you know it. Yeah, appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, everybody. That was the greatest, one of the greatest interviews I've ever had. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video. Talk to you next time.